Ahoy and welcome back once again to the channel. I hope you're all fit and well. For today's video, I've decided to try something a little bit different. I'm always trying to evolve my content, find ways of making it a little bit different, a little bit better than videos I've made in the past. And today I'm going to review a couple of watches in a slightly different way. What I normally do is get familiar with the watch, take some videos, take some pictures, familiarise myself with the brand and the specifications, then plonk myself in front of the watch with the microphone switched on and I just start waffling and then I edit that into something that is presentable. There's no script, I just crack open my head normally and tip my thoughts out into a video. But for today's review, and I'd like some feedback on whether or not you think this is good, bad, yeah, let me know in the comments section, I'm going to answer some questions I think you might have about the watches that I'm reviewing. The sort of questions that I'd like answered. It might work, it might not. Let's find out, shall we? Today I am reviewing a couple of Aqua Trident watches. These are part of a larger, a slightly larger cluster of brands. You've got Zesame and then Ingred, I think it is. They're all part of a cluster of brands owned by a company called Time Culture. I did review a couple of Zesame watches a few weeks ago. I was really impressed with those and yeah, the brand or Time Culture reached out to me and said, well, we've actually got these other brands. Would you be interested in featuring some Aqua Trident watches? So I took a look at their website. I thought they looked pretty interesting. And I thought, yeah, why not? So they have sent me these watches to review in this video. Um, yeah, these watches, for, for those of you who are new to my channel, it's probably worth pointing out that like most channels these days, I do accept free watches to review. I never ever accept the offer of cash though. Quite often reviewers get offers of free watches and money. I always turn down the money. I just say, send me the watches. I'll review the watches. And generally I review watches I like, which is probably why a lot of of my reviews seem quite positive. I get offered a lot of watches and well, I'd rather review watches that I like than review watches that I dislike. And I accepted these watches because like I said, when I saw the website, I looked at these two watches. I actually picked these two watches. I said, yeah, I'd love to review a couple. Please send me these two. And my first impressions were mostly good. I had familiarised myself already with the watches before they turned up. Um, I thought they actually looked better, in particular the bronze coloured one. That is a stainless steel watch, by the way. That's not a CUSN8 bronze watch. Um, yeah, I thought that one in particular looked really, really good. There were a couple of things that sort of disappointed me a little bit. The buckles on the straps I just thought were overkill. They're massive. I'm not wild about huge buckles like that. I know these watches perhaps aren't targeted towards me. They're perhaps targeted to a slightly younger audience. People that like watches that sort of stand out a little bit more. I think they look good. Um, but yeah, there's just a couple of things about them that I was a little bit disappointed with initially. The carbon one is really interesting. It's super light. Really, really light. Of course it's light, it's carbon, it's supposed to be light, uh, but I'm one of those people that quite often associates quality with weight and yeah, it just doesn't feel like it's got enough heft, although I do like the way it looks, it's definitely different isn't it? And the specifications are impressive. In fact, I was quite surprised to see, and I'm going to start with the specifications for the Carbon watch first. I was really quite surprised to see that this watch has the Solita SW200 in it. I'm going to talk about the price in a minute. When you see the price, I think you would expect there to be a more premium movement in this watch than the NH35, for example. Um, so yeah, really pleased to see they've yeah upgraded this movement or given it a decent movement. That is a very good movement. 28,800 beats per hour, hacks, hand winds. I'm sure you're all familiar with that movement. Now it looks like a dive watch, but it only has 100 meters of water resistance. So it's not a true dive watch. Let's be honest, who actually takes their dive watches diving these days? Um, not many of us at all. Um, I think there will be some people out there disappointed that this watch only has 100 meters of water resistance 
assistance, but it looks like a dive watch. It behaves like a dive watch. There is a diver's bezel and the bezel action is surprisingly good. I thought it was going to feel a little bit like titanium and the clicks weren't going to be particularly crisp, but they are. Have a listen. carbon bezel insert as well um, lots of loom on these watches i'll show you the loom degrading at the end of the video sapphire crystal which i think you would expect screw down crown screwed down case back which i guess sort of explains the 100 meters of water resistance this watch comes on an fkm rubber strap it feels like an fkm rubber strap the buckle i've already said it it's massive. I'm not wild about oversized buckles like this, but it matches the watch, doesn't it? It's a statement. The buckle itself is a statement. Really interesting dial, a bit of texture on it. Uh, you've got the date at the three o'clock. Um, there's some loom on that date window, which is pretty cool. Applied indices, sort of dark gunmetal gray hands. Um, yeah, the specifications are strong and the movement in particular is impressive. And they've called the carbon watch Neptune. The other watch, the bronze coloured watch, has been called Ocean. And I actually prefer the way this watch looks. Um, the colours are incredible. Um, the specifications are good. This watch is cheaper, so you're not going to get the Salita SW200 inside of this watch. The movement is the NH35 meteorite dial though beautiful color isn't it um the case is a stainless steel case it's been coated to look like this again lots of loom on this watch some loom down the sides of the case and on the crown the bezel insert is yeah really quite unusual ceramic according to the specifications it looks to me more like sort of blued steel or colored steel again this is clearly a dive style watch but again 100 meters of water resistance this one does have a screwed down case back and a screw down crown sapphire crystal again with ar coating the strap is a silicon strap again they've put a massive buckle on it and again it matches the finishing on the case well so it goes with the watch i'm not wild about silicon straps um, and it is quite an unusual silicon strap it's got these sort of fins on it it sort of goes um it's probably a little bit bold for me but um yeah the specifications once again pretty impressive and for those of you interested um this is what the bezel action sounds like again it's yeah quite nice On the whole, the quality of these watches is right up there. What I will say about the carbon watch is, and I don't think this is any fault of a manufacturer or a factory or the designers, it doesn't look like carbon fibre can be finished to the same sort of precision and smoothness as materials like stainless steel when you zoom into the bezel insert you can see the numbers in the bezel insert are a little bit sort of rough and there's some sort of loom that's been left over it reminds me a little bit of tiling i used to do a little bit of tiling and grouting and yeah the sort of loom has been applied and there's been a little bit of extra loom sort of spread out over the gap that it's supposed to be in so when you zoom into the carbon fiber watch, it's not as impressive, although you do get some really, really cool light play. The other watch, however, looks to have been very nicely finished. I was quite surprised actually that it wasn't a bronze case. Um, the plating has been done very, very nicely. Um, the transitions between the brushing and the polishing look good. The polishing does look nice and bright. I'm not seeing any issues with the loom application. That meteorite dial is impressive it's a sandwich dial so you can see through to the loom underneath and so the cutouts in that meteorite dial are nice and crisp the hands are bright and cleanly cut even the buckle is nicely finished so yeah the quality is right up there Of course, you're going to pay more for the watch housing, the Salita SW200. It's also carbon fiber. I suspect that's not a particularly easy or cheap material to work with. Um, so, yeah, the 
the Neptune watch is £432. I'll put the conversions on the screen for you. Um, yeah, it's quite a lot, isn't it, for this sort of watch, but they are offering you something really quite different. The other watch, the Ocean, is a limited edition watch. There's only 50 of these being made. They've sent me number 14 of 50. £267 for this. Despite it housing the NH35, I think this is perhaps a little bit better value. I like my watches to be nicely finished, so... Yeah, that sort of carbon fiber roughness that you get with the other watch. I don't know. It's not really for me. This one, however, looks really, really good. It's definitely more my thing, although I'm just not wild about the choice of strap and buckle. I do recommend these watches. I'm not seeing anything with these watches that would discourage me from recommending these particular watches or any other watches from this brand or one of their sister brands. Of course, I saw those Zezemi watches recently. Those were impressive, beautifully finished watches. Great value for money. These are going to appeal to fewer people, I think. They're a little bit more unusual, a little bit more quirky. You're going to pay a bit of a premium for them, but you're definitely going to be picking up quality watches that I don't think many people are going to have. They're going to be conversation starters, I think. So yeah, if you like them, I do recommend them. Right, guys, let me know what you think of this review style. It's a little bit different. I think the videos are a little bit longer. It's a bit more structured. Do you prefer the old school way of doing it or the way I used to do it? You know, just sort of crack my head open and share my thoughts in a video. Um, or do you prefer this slightly more structured way? Or maybe there's another way. Let me know, guys. I'm always open to trying different things.